Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to devlog number 29 for a spaceship game that I'm making in Unreal Engine 5 with my buddy Rich and some help from the community. Today, I'm really excited because we have some awesome new sound effects in the game that complement the new VFX for our jump transition. We've got a bunch of cool new concept art and some other really cool stuff in the works. I want to get into it with the coolest thing first, the new jump system. All right, since the last devlog, we made a lot of progress on our jump system. Rich implemented a new targeting ring. It shows us the different jump destinations we can get to. We've refined the entrance and exit animations and we have sound effects. Shout out to Panzer V1 who's been doing the sound effects for this game. He whipped up an epic warp transit sound effect and I just can't get enough of it. It really ties the whole sequence together. All right, let's go check out this distress signal, see what's up. So at this point in the sequence, we are loading the next level. And then we have that nice seamless transition as we move along. All right, we got a battle cruiser here. We got to take him out. This isn't really a real mission, but just a, <laughs> a little prototype level that we can pretend is a distress call for when we're actually when we actually have missions set up in the game. And our battle cruiser is not returning fire right now. That's okay. I'll take him out regardless. Now, it's just really great being able to transition between levels in the game. The levels themselves are actually in their proper solar system locations as well, which is really cool. So in theory, if we wanted to fly between a planet and its moon, we could actually do that without entering a jump sequence. It could be done in the physical world because of how we're building the solar system. It actually has all the real scale and properties and the levels are located where they should be, which is why when I bring up the targeting system, it shows lava, which is our kind of lava planet area as being in the actual location that it is in reference to the player. And we get a little bit of light loading lag there. The sequence still needs quite a bit of tweaking, but much further along. Now to give you a little bit more behind the scenes, here we are loaded up in Unreal Engine 5 and I'll just give you a quick walkthrough of the visual side of the actual jump process. So when we're entering the jump, I've created a jump bubble effect here. This is basically just a stretched out sphere with a material applied to it. And then as it goes through the animation, we add a little lightning to the nose and we add a black hole distortion effect, a flash, and then it kind of goes away and then we're in the jump there. Now to build this material here, I followed a couple tutorials and then figured out a bunch of stuff on my own. So basically we create a gradient in our material designer, which is math. And I use that gradient to fade different layers or components of the material. So the material is really just two noise textures. We've got this standard noise here, which is a fractal noise. And then uh, Uriah, who's been helping us out on the game, hooked me up with this spark texture here, which is layered over that. And then those are faded at different in different ways and kind of added and multiplied and subtracted back into each other. Um, I set the uh, emissive color there. Um, I could make that a parameter that we adjust in engine and then all these properties here this is a dynamic property node uh, lets me adjust the actual properties of this effect in unreal engines niagara system and so when i'm in niagara uh, i can open my jump bubble section and we can go into the dynamic material properties which lets me speak with the material here and i've created basically curves that control the brightness, speed, and opacity. And so the system here is really just controlling the material. So as you can see, it gets faster and faster and faster. The brightness increases and also it gets less opaque or more opaque. So after the ramp up process, we then transition to the warp 
process. And this effect here, I could have built it, but I decided to buy a pretty cheap asset pack on the Unreal Engine store and just modify it. So this one is actually designed for, I think, first person if you're looking into the warp itself. It looks pretty darn cool. And so our version of this is a kind of a stretched out top down version of this. I can optimize this a bit better, make it look better. But for the time being, it actually serves its function. We just kind of move stuff around since we're seeing from top down. Uh, the effect still works pretty well. And we get all the cool, nice properties and parameters of the original effect. Although I still need to delete that ball. Now this effect already has a pretty elaborate construction graph here that kind of sets all the materials up. And all I had to do was add in a emissive modifier here, which we could talk to in our jump sequence and then scale that emissive so that it becomes super bright as we're exiting that warp effect. Then we create a post-processing material that's laid on top of the entire screen and that gives us the fish eye and the fade to white. So there's a nice little bit of math going on in here, a nice little radial gradient exponent. And then I basically hooked up the intensity and the white factor, the brightness, um, to a material property collection. And so here I've got this little MPC, material property collection, and that lets me basically modify the material from just kind of a data sheet, which I can access from a blueprint. And so that lets us access the actual property in our timeline. And so you can see I have intensity and white linked up here. And those are controlled by two timelines, which are curves. So the first one here is the grow shrink effect. Um, and I actually ended up making the curve here so that I could copy it, modify it in our curve editor. And then the second one is the exposure ramp, which is another curve. And that one just ramps all the way up really high to the value that I needed it at. And then back to the event graph, you can see that the grow shrink and exposure ramp are then controlling those material properties. And so when you see it during the transition process into the warp state and out of the warp state, we have a nice flash to white. And then we get this cool full screen distortion effect that has a little bit of a wobble to it. And that wobble you see is that curve that I made right here. It gets big and then smaller and then a little smaller and then it resets to zero. Now, I'm also excited to say that we will be getting back into ship modeling and ship concepts soon. We've held off on it for a little bit because I wanted to establish a bunch of gameplay mechanics and make sure that our layouts and our ideas were going to work before we really got into building models for the game. But now we're there and Island, our concept artist, has been designing some early game beginner ships for us. And out of these initial concepts, he's got some finalized versions that we're going to get into soon. I actually don't really want to spoil the surprise much more beyond this one here, but he's got a few other concepts that look really dope. And this might be an early game starter ship where it can mostly do hauling, but maybe defend itself a little bit. Maybe it can be upgraded with some components that you want. Um, and I am just absolutely digging the look of this. It's really fun, feels super purpose built. Uh, got cool detail to look at. Uh, I'm just, I can't wait to build this and get it in game. So excited about the concepts. He's also been working on some pirate ship design stuff, but we'll get into that later. So progress has been cooking along. Admittedly, this jump process is a lot more involved than I initially thought it was going to be, but it is going to tie the entire game together. So we got to get it right. Probably spend a bit more time refining, optimizing, and bug hunting with it. I'm sure it'll even change as the project moves along. I'm really excited about the next phases of this project. And if you want to see our progress in more detail, check us out on Discord. There's a link in the video description. We're almost at a thousand Discord followers. Something happens at a thousand. I'm not sure what happens, but come check us out there. Uh, it's a great way to sort of contribute, talk about the project, see what we're thinking about. We ping you guys for information all the time and see what you think about gameplay systems and stuff. So. Great location. Hope you guys enjoyed this devlog. And if you want to check out some of the other devlogs, they're right here. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.